Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah ni Rabbil Alamin wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil mursalim Sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa maulana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Okay, here are people who are very hungry today. People that are hungry are people that are angry. <laughs> MashaAllah. You know, there are momentous times in the history of all peoples. Momentous days, momentous weeks, momentous months. The Muslims are no exception. Islamic history overflows with events and occurrences worthy of mention and indeed worthy of remembrance. Islamic civilization in the 7th century established itself in the Middle East before moving forth to conquer land after land and bring with it knowledge, civilization and real progress. It is well known that the holiest of months in the Islamic lunar calendar is Ramadan, which is very soon. May Allah make us rich with Allah. A month with unrivaled historic significance, both at the time of the Prophet and after him. However, all the Islamic months have the unique flavor and significance. Here we look at one such month the month of Rajab. And it is indeed a month which carries a momentous history. In particular, Rajab saw many events in the Islamic history which belong in the category of those which changed the course of history and the pages of history were rewritten. The month of Rajab, the 27th, is most famous for the incident of the night journey and the ascension of our Nabi Muhammad وسلم, to the heavens, the Al Isra Wal Miraj. Also, another event that took place, Sayyidina Bilal ibn Harisah brought a group of 400 people named from Banu Muzina in the presence of our Nabi وسلم, and they all embraced Islam. And they became followers of our Nabi in the fourth year of Hijrah. Another event that took place, the second oath of Aqaba took place in the month of Rajab, when the first Islamic state was established by the Prophet. Also, the Battle of Tabu took place in the ninth Hijrah against the Romans in this month of Rajab. And this was the last battle which our Nabi Ali Salam actually participated in. On the 28th of Rajab, Imam Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu anhu started his journey to Kufa from Medina to stop Yazid from forcefully taking over the Khilafah. Also in, in 146, after Hijrah, Imam Abu Hanifa was sent to prison by Mansur, the leader at the time, after the Imam's refusal to state that Mansur was the right Khalifa. After the Imam, subhanAllah, as well, he did not want to take the position of the Qadi, the presidency of the Supreme Court. You see, sometimes the rulers manipulate certain important people. Imam Abu Hanifa was not to be bought, subhanAllah, what a great personality. While in prison, Imam Abu Hanifa was thrashed with a stick. Mansur eventually asked for Mahaf and repented and sent the Imam money only to be refused again. Imam Abu Hanifa was not to be bought. <coughs> By now, Imam Abu Hanifa had become such a well known person and thousands flocked to meet and seek his opinion wherever he went. His imprisonment far from reduced his popularity and Mansur realized that he would have to treat Imam very carefully. So he allowed him to teach while he was still in prison, subhanAllah. 
Mansur finally decided he has to get the photo of the Imam and he had him poisoned. And Imam Abu Hanifa, feeling the effects of the poison, bent down in salah and died the 15th of Rajab. Subhanallah. Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah, also passed away on the 14th of Rajab. Imam Muslim, these are great fuqaha, who also passed away on the 24th of Rajab. Imam Nawawi, also passed away on the 14th of Rajab. Jerusalem was liberated by Salah al-Din in the month of Rajab. On the 28th of Rajab, the Ottoman Khilafah, the government, was destroyed by the traitor Kamal Ataturk. You know that. On the 6th of Rajab, a great personality, Khwaja Mu'ayyuddin Hassan Chishti Ajmeri, passed away. What a great personality Khwaja is. That is a topic by itself. Especially when he came from, he came to the Indian con subcontinent and he made millions of people Muslim. Our forefathers were probably Hindus. And because of Khwaja Mu'ayyuddin Chishti Ajmeri, made so many millions, and I mean millions, there's, there's no exaggeration, made them. And up to today, if you go, you will see how the feeding scheme carries on with with, with the pots, those who have seen on YouTube or whatever, you climb down the ladder to get into the into the pots. Right? Subhanallah. On the eighth of Rajat, our Sheikh Maulana Sheikh Nazim al Haqqani and Naqshabandi passed away. Allah grant you the And so many. But the gravity of the matter is, we think of Al Aqsa. It is enough that this month reminds us of Masjid al-Aqsa and the great events in the Prophet ﷺ's life his journey to heaven when he met so many prophets when Nabi Musa والسلام, who stayed with him Nabi والسلام, until the number was reduced from 50 to 5 SubhanAllah and we still get rewarded for 50 and we still can't even make 5 Ya Allah, Allah grant us the strength Ya Allah and you should remember that Umar ibn al-Khattab was the first person to open Jerusalem. And Salahuddin Ayyubi was the one person who freed. And we should all together say, Oh Aqsa, here we come. Even if thousands of Muslims and families were kicked out of their homes, Jerusalem was our first Qibla. And will remain the place of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's miraj, and will return to us in Shabbat, no matter how long it takes. Amin. Biruh, bidam, nafdiq ya aqsa. By our soul, by our blood, we free you, O aqsa. Wala tahinu, wala tahzanu, wa antum al ala. In kuntu ta'ala. In kuntu mu'minin. So do not weaken, do not be sad, says Allah in the Quran. You will be superior if you are true believers. Amin. As Allah says, وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ And indeed we laid it down in the book of Zabur after having reminded it Mankind, that my righteous servants shall inherit the earth. Abu Huraira reports that Nabi Ali Salam said, A group of my ummah will not cease to fight at the gates of Damascus and at the gates of Al Quds and its surroundings. The betrayal or desertion of whoever deserves them will not harm them in the least. They will remain victorious. Standing for the truth until the final hour arises. Muslims should use this month of Rajab to increase our ibadat. Salah, fasting, dhikr, whatever we need to. Because we are making plans for Ramadan. Not what color the house will be painted, or what top we can buy for ourselves, etc. Nothing wrong with it, no. 
but prioritize your life. What is important first? وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Be quick in the race for forgiveness from your Lord. From your Lord. <coughs> وَجَنَّةٍ أَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُعِدَّةٍ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And for a God whose worth is that of the whole of the heavens and of the earth. Prepare for the righteous. May Allah make us of the We are now in the holy month of Rajab. And Rajab is in the one of the four sacred months in the Islamic year. We are encouraged to use Rajab and Sha'aban in preparation for the holy month of Ramadan. It is related by Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his farewell speech of Hajj where he says, In the Zaman, let me translate you to brevity of time. Time has come back to its original state, which it had when Allah created the heavens and earth. The year is 12 months, four of which are sacred. Three of them are in succession. dhul Qa'dah, dhul Hajj, and Al-Muharram, and the fourth being Rajab Mudar. Al-Ladi Bayna Jumada wa Sha'ban. We stand between Jamal al-Thani and Sha'ban. And Allah mentions, in the shuhur, in the body is the ashra shahr. Verily, the number of months when with Allah is 12 months. So it was ordained by Allah on the day when He created the heavens and the earth of them that four are sacred. Minha arba'atu hud. Dalika deenud. That is the right religion. So do not wrong yourself today. But why is Rajab included as part of this sacred mass? Some scholars speculate that the above four months may have been sanctified at the time of the establishment of the Hajj by Prophet Nabi Ibrahim and to allow safe passage and peaceful passage for the pilgrims to the way of Allah. According to this view, by recognizing that these four months are sacred, the pre-Islamic Arabs were thus merely following an ancient Abrahamic tradition. Really. And the argument clearly makes sense with respect to the three consecutive months. Eh? The Qa'da, the Hajj, and Muharram, because they coincide with more the Hajj. But this line of reasoning does not hold for the seven months, lunar month, which is the Raja, which Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu himself said, it stands outside, alone, and being distinctive custom and the tradition of the tribe of Mudar. And the custom and tradition and the tribe of Mudar is provided in the Hadith, in Bukhari. And I quote, where one of the members of the tribe of Gulab says they had various tribal cultural traditions and customs before embracing Islam. We, and I quote, we used to worship stones and when we discovered a more attractive stone, we would abandon the first stone and then worship the new one. If we did not find the stone, we would collect some soil from the earth and after milking our sheep over it, we would perform tawaf around it. Subhanallah. And when the month of Rajab arrived, we used to stop all military action and we used to call the month of Rajab the iron remover. For we used to remove and throw away the iron parts of every spear and arrow in the month of Rajab. This was the custom. This, this was the tribe of Mudak, as I mentioned earlier in the hadith. So this was, Rajab was a sacred month during which all warfare was not only suspended, but it also involved the ritual discarding of the weapons of war. So in the Jahiliya times, the Arabs also used to slaughter a sacrifice during Rajab as an act of worship towards the idols. And when Islam came, Teaching that sacrifices were only offered to Allah Jalla Jalalu and this deed of the Jahiliyyah was abolished. The Fuqaha somehow differed as to the ruling on 
offering sacrifices during the month of Rajab. And Abu Huraira and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La fara'a wa la atira. The Prophet said, Neither fara'a nor atira. Now, Al fara'a was the first offspring of a camel or a sheep which the pagans used to offer as a sacrifice to their idols. Well, atira fi Rajab. And Atira was a sheep which used to be slaughtered during the month of Rajab. So the Shafi'is says that the Atira has not been abrogated and they regard it as a mustahab act. And this is also the view of Ibn Sirin. It is narrated by Rubaisha on Mina. A man called out while he was in Mina and said, Ya Rasulullah! We used to sacrifice Atira during the Jahiliya in Raja. What do you command us to do? The Prophet said, salam, sacrifice during whatever month it is. Do good for the sake of Allah and feed the poor. Right? They said, Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa We used to sacrifice Farah during Jahiliya. What do you recommend us to do? He said, for every flock of grazing animals, feed the first bull, actually feed the rest of your flock until it reaches an age where it could be used to carry the load. Then sacrifice it and give it meat in charity. The hadith, according to the ulama, is weak. Weak hadith. But we say, do it, it is a poor benefit. Do it with a poor benefit. That Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal radiallahu anhu, he says so beautifully, I prefer a weak hadith over the opinion of people. I repeat, I prefer a weak hadith over the opinions of people. So let, let us make action and don't look for an excuse and don't be cheap and don't be stingy. Because where is that money going to go with you? Right? At least what you put in, inshallah, you will see the blessings in your lifetime on your own family and your children. I mean, inshallah, and inshallah in akhirah. Our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in a beautiful hadith which you all know, he had such admiration for Raja. And what did he used to say? Allahumma barik lana fi Raja wa Shaaban wa Balirna Ramadan. Oh Allah, bless us in Raja. I mean. And let us in Sha'ban. And let us reach Ramadan. Ya Allah. In a, also in another hadith, you know, we go into the semantics, it's weak and things like that. Raja, Shahrullah. Raja is a month of Allah. Sha'ban, Shahri, said Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my month. And Ramadan is the month of my Ummah. SubhanAllah. Eh? So, in other words, Rajab is a month of cultivation, Shaban is irrigating it, the field, and Ramadan is reaping and harvesting the benefits of the earth. Okay. Let's look for respite from our daily hustle of life and try to get closer to Allah. We need time out. We're too busy in the rat race. MashaAllah, making months of money, alhamdulillah. But from a loaf of bread, how many slices can you eat? That's the reality of life. Right? And then the bread rots. Then what do you do? Stuff for the poor. Give it to the poor way before anything, inshallah. You know? Let us stop our ibadah. Whatever we do. And whatever we do, don't even consider it as something. Think of it as nothing. But do. You know, in the time of Nabi Musa, alayhi salam, he was passing through a barren hill. He came across a cave where a, a pious man was. Now, you know, in those years, the people used to live long. 600 years, 800 years. Oh, can you imagine the insurance premium? <laughs> the people all over. But what I'm trying to say is, they used to live long, mashallah. Right? So, as he's going past, the man sees Musa alayhi salam. The Prophet Musa comes and greets him. Salaamu alaykum. The man asks Nabi Musa, who are you? And he says, I am Musa. He says, are you Nabi Musa, Prophet? 
He said, yes. He said, then the man says, do me a favor. Ask Allah for the past 100 years I have been making ibadat in this cave. 100 years. Hey? I've done nothing else. Just ask him, what will he give me for my efforts? Nabi Musa bin Taqribullah. Hey? He conveys it to Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. And Musa alayhi salam says, Tell Allah answers him obviously. Tell him we shall inform him tomorrow. The pious man said, ah, Another day, tomorrow is not far, I shall wait. Hey? So the pious man had this habit of going every morning to a nearby water place or canal or whatever or river to fetch water or bath. You know? But the following morning when he went, he got lost. This is Allah's Tadbir. He lost his way. He had no GPS. <laughs> he lost it. And it was hot and he was thirsty. Ya Allah. And he, would, he realized that he would die of thirst. That was the seriousness of the situation. And eventually he comes across a man who has some water. And the man, he asks the man for some water. He says, man, there is no water in this wilderness here. Whatever little water there is, is for me. The pious man began to cry and plead for help. Please, you know. Eventually, the stranger agreed to give him a tumbler of water with the condition that he should give him something in return. The man says, I want nothing. The only thing I have with me is my ibadat, my worship for 100 years. The man says, if you agree to transfer the reward of the 100 years of ibadat, of worship, I will give you a tumbler of water. Right? So the pious man thinks, yeah, I can still love inshallah, you know, and I'll be praying again inshallah for the um, further amount of time. So the deal was done. <coughs> it was accepted. That evening, Musa alayhi salam went to this person and the pious man said to him, I have sold my 100 years of ibadat for a tumbler of water. Nabi Musa says, I am aware of this. Because Allah told me. <laughs> Fully aware. But Allah has asked me to convey this to you. Is the value of 100 years or one tumbler of water, eh? your, your ibadat is worth for 100 years, for one tumbler of water, then you must settle the value of the water you've been drinking all the life, all your life. The important, right? When a man heard this, he cried. He cried. Really. And out of, out of shame and astafar and toba, that's why he cried. And subhanallah. When the pious man was, he was, he really regretted what he said. So, he said, Oh Musa, tell Allah to forgive my sins. Allah is beneficent and most merciful. Immediately the revelation came. Oh Musa, tell this man that his remorse has pleased us more than in 100 years of ibadat. Subhanallah. And we have given him the rewards for a thousand years of salah. So we learn that we should not be boasting about our actions or our ibadah that we do. Neither should we consider others as inferior to us in religion and in iman. Rather, we should continue to see the stafar, lest our good deeds perish on account of our self-conceit. Be very careful. As I mentioned in the week of the world as well, our Mawlana Shaykh Nabi Muhammad used to say, whatever ibadah that you do, throw it into the ocean. Right? You just see a little bit of a ring taking place, gone. Right? Our expectations are 
Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 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 Allah subhanah